Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today we're in a 2014 Chevy Corvette. This is the uh, factory MyLink system, and what we're gonna do today is add the uh, our AV module with smartphone interface, so we can pull up, uh, you know, smartphone video mapping and whatnot, <clears throat> as well as we're gonna add a front camera to this vehicle for parking, which should prove to be very very handy, and then also pull up uh, rear camera on demand as well while moving down the road. So once again, 2014 Chevy Corvette stock MyLink system. We're gonna add our AV module. I'll get started on the teardown now. All right guys, so here in the 14 VET, um, we've already done a little bit of disassembly on this vehicle, trying to make some headway here. Just like most of your other GMs, this knee bolster piece, there's two uh, seven millimeters underneath the center um, of the panel right here that hold this on. And then you actually have to remove the door sill piece here as well. There's actually a seven hidden behind it over here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop these back off just to show you. Door panel sill piece here, basically just lifting up. I've already done this, it's loose, just sitting in here. This one just comes out all in one piece. And then there's another one here um, behind the door area, just to the left of the dash. It just unsnaps as well, it's just the snap, you know, push clips. Behind there, you'll expose the uh, last seven millimeter that was holding on the uh, door sill trim piece. It actually screws into here. There's a walnut missing out of here. Um, I'm gonna put that back in here shortly. Um, what we're trying to get to, the HMI actually sits right up under here, just to the left and up of the clutch pedal. You can see the connectors on the bottom of it there. Um, what we're gonna get, actually go ahead and do to remove that, it's a lot easier if you take out this Hood release and the OBD connector makes it a lot easier, I found. So we're gonna go ahead and start by taking that guy out, just two sevens on the OBD. Drop that guy down, and then you're gonna switch over to a 10. There's actually two 10s holding this bracket. One here, and one just to the right of the uh, hood, re hood release here. All right, once that guy's down and out of your way, it'll help you get the cables out of the way. And then from there, you can see the HMI. Um, there's two tabs, one on each end of this plastic bracket. What you're gonna need to do is just kind of grab these cables as a bulk. And while you're using your fingers to release tension off the uh, locking mechanism, pull it slightly downward to release the HMI. It'll actually drop down just like so. Once you've dropped it down, unplug your colored connectors everything is keyed and color coded once again and then you can slide the HMI down and out of the way all right guys so first and foremost your light switch or um, HUD information also your uh, mirror switch this panel's gotta come out, it just clips. So carefully pop this guy out, unplug it, get it out of your way. Once you do that, you can see in there, um, go ahead and hold that right there, right there, John. This bracket that the HMI attaches to. Now, it's not going to be a lot of fun, 10 millimeters, but there are three bolts that got to come out to get this thing out. There's one right here, which you can see the socket barely goes through. And then there's one up here, which is a royal pain in the butt. Okay. And then there's one down here at the bottom. It's all got to come out so this bracket can get out of our way because our module is going to slide in this little pocket right there real nice. And I'll show you that once we get closer to it. So sorry for the fuzzy video, but again, that's the bracket back there we're working with. Um, those, that's doing worse. Those uh, bolts got to come out of there in order for this install to happen. So. I'm gonna get that out of our way and we'll be back to show you a little bit more as we get the module mounted in there. All right guys, so you can see in here now, module's gone out of the way. Um, 
that's gonna give room for us to work this guy up in here from the back side or right through here will fit now the problem is we've got cables that got to be plugged in for cameras and then USB and uh, HDMI so it's gonna be a little bit of a puzzle going in here likely the cables are gonna have to come up first and kind of plug in and then slide this module in and tag it right down in that cavity that's gonna be the idea behind all this just so you can kind of get an idea of what we're trying to do what we're trying to accomplish um, but you can see from down below that bracket and everything is is all gone now we've got some room to work so let me keep moving forward and I'll be back to show you what we're doing along the way. All right guys, so we're mounting this camera on the front of this Corvette and I'm just gonna tell you right now, this is definitely a job for a shop or a two man job. No way one guy's gonna do it by himself. And if you're gonna do this on your own, you better have some experience because not a lot of fun, just gonna warn you. Here in Colorado, we have to have the front license plate, which made for a perfect little spot to mount the camera right on the bottom of it. If you don't have a front license plate, you're gonna have to get a little bit creative, mount it like right here on this lip, or right up under here would work too, just to the left or to the right of center. About the only way you're gonna do it um, without some kind of a license plate bracket. Secondly, more importantly, to make things even more challenging, you can't get through on the bottom. Let's go ahead and get that back out of our way. Got no choice but to remove this panel right there, which is held in by uh, seven. seven, seven millimeters. And then in the back, there are four, 10 millimeters back there, holding that guy on. And then that'll drop down and out, just like so. And what you have to do, John will be so kind. So once you have well, that up. One man is prying down. There's actually uh, two sevens that sit almost directly behind these holes here. Once you drop down the panel, the empty sevens that are open here, there's, all, there's two sevens that sit upwards and kind of behind it. You need to drop those down and then that'll allow you to, there's another piece of plastic you can actually pry down with your hand that actually covers the radiator here, radiator support. Once we got those down, I was able to reach my hand in and pull our wire down from the camera. We're then gonna route it across, and there is a harness to tie this to along the way. And we're gonna go up into the engine bay at that spot right there. And John will hold the camera. Go on, on up. Behind the radiator, you can kind of see a hand coming up here where the wire is going to feed up. And we're just going to follow that harness all the way, zip tie, into the car. And that's going to be the next fun little project right there. So we're going to go ahead and get this run. Just giving you a little what you're in for here. Um, again, cross that front fascia, up, follow the harness, and then we'll enter the car here. All right guys, so here on the 14 VET, we're on the passenger side now, we're gonna access our radio brain. So, order of disassembly here, this little piece here has to come off first, just to the right of the dash, just basically snapping it off with the push clips, and then that'll actually free this piece up, the door seal, I've already removed this one, so it's gonna be loose. This just pries upward, and the door seal just has those little push clips holding it on. And once we get that done, underneath the glove box, you're gonna have this guy here. It's basically just got the trim tool, you know, panel, popper, whatever you want to call those, holding it on. Um, basically, there's your uh, floor light. It's an LED light that just snaps in and turns to unlock it. Um, I've just already removed this from the vehicle. Basically, this is going to allow us to access here. Let me pull the tools out of the way. We reach down and pull the carpet back. You can see this metal brace behind there. And there's a couple of tins, looks like, on the floor, and then one up top holding that in. The BCM actually sits behind there and the radio as well. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get that bracket out of there and then we'll come back and show you that. All right, so back in this vat. This is where we're working with, guys. The BCM sits right here after you get the, uh, the nuts out of the way. It's secured by a couple tins on the floor and then one up here. That big bracket that was in there earlier, right there, will come right out. That's gonna give you access to the BCM, which we'll find which wire you're gonna go to first here in a second um, to power the module. And then the radio sits behind this. You can kind of see this wraps, pulls up. And the connectors for the radio are right back here. And you may be able to squeeze it in without removing any of this, I'll tell you here in a second. But if you're also, as a side note, if you're doing a CarPlay upgrade, um, you're gonna be swapping this piece behind this um, panel right here as well. So this BCM will need to get out of your way. And as you can see, a little clip right here, that'll allow this guy to kind of pull out. And then we can kind of swing it up out of the way and then lift this whole bracket up to access the radio if we need to get to it. All right guys, so once you unclip that BCM, this will just kind of come right out. And just FYI, we're working with the green plug right here. Pin number five, which is a purple yellow wire, we'll be working with for the um, one wire that needs to be hooked up for the module. You can see, Right in between, uh, behind here is the radio module. And this guy will lift up and out far enough for you to sneak it out of there. If you're doing the car play, that's what you're gonna have to do. Just bend this guy out and out so that radio will sneak out of there. Otherwise, if you're just doing this AV module, just reach back here and unplug the gray 20 pin because that's all we're working with on this car, so. I'm not actually going to remove it on this particular install. If you're doing the car play, again, grab down here, just pull it out, and then just work the radio out and around, out and around the back side here. It's the only way it's going to come out. It's not fun, but that's what has to be done. Um, AV module, though, you can just reach back here and fill it and unplug it, plug the T in, and roll on, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to get to rocking here. I'll be right back. All right, guys, once again, not fun at all. Um, but green plug, pin five, purple yellow wire, solder to that. We're gonna tape that up nice. And then we've got our T, you can see the RCA's coming in right there. Our T harness is um, right, uh, right there at the bottom of the, uh, the screen there. And then these RCA's, the only way you can get them across the vehicle right on the back side of that brace and it's a one-shot deal again two people somebody to catch it on the other side and pull through pretty much the only way it's gonna happen um, and that's gonna run over to our module all right guys so here in the vet this center console piece getting this out is a nightmare we're trying to utilize the port in here for our uh, smartphone mirroring and turn this into an HDMI port is the goal of this uh, so here what we actually had to do was on the inside of the uh, armrest There's three t15 torque screws that actually hold the center armrest cover on those do have to come off reason being this panel sits underneath it So take the t t15s out there and then use a plastic trim tool remover. You can actually pry right up in between this uh, Seam this one's already obviously been taken out now what I did after that, there's a 10 millimeter nut here. There's one here as well. And then there's two back here. All right, and then moving up towards the front, once you get your shifter down into like second gear, you can kind of turn and pull this guy out. You can see there's a couple of uh, tins inside of here as well that I've already removed. There's one on each side, driver and passenger side up near the front. Since I've done that already on this one, you can see this whole piece now just lifts in and out and what we're going to do is just kind of flip this over with some help from an assistant here and on the bottom side i'm just going to unplug this port and um, install our hdmi port into here so i'm going to go ahead and get that piece out here and uh, we'll come back and show you that all right guys so um again 
It comes out very challenging, but that factory port will come out from the back side. You have to just kind of angle this up like we showed you and work it out from the back. Enlarge that hole slightly, then that guy will pop in and route right there and come in real nice right there along, up, and over. And we've now got a big mess, which we're gonna clean up and I'll show you the, the outcome here in a second, but you can see somewhat, we've got the module tucked up in there. Now that'll lay in there nice and flat when it's all said and done. Again, we're gonna have to plug in all the, uh, the connections first, make our camera connections, and then we'll be back to show you the outcome. All right guys, back in this vet. Um, we've got that, you gotta get it right at the right angle there, I guess, but we're snuck up snug to the uh there's an air vent on top there and we're uh, basically velcroed right to the top of that and that thing's not going anywhere it's gonna be the best spot for it you can pack some foam in there too if you're worried about it coming down but it's it's in there pretty good let's see if i can yeah i'm not gonna be able to do this with holding the holding the foam but it's uh it's in there pretty nice all right guys, so back in this 2014 Corvette and we do have this finally wrapped up here. So let me get this thing fired up. Where's this? Show you real quick the uh, HDMI USB port. Came out real nice in there. And we've got the factory MyLink up. We're gonna activate the module. And I've got some movies loaded up on. The flash drive there. And I'll take off and play. Nice, good surround sound. This does give you on screen controls right down here and whatnot. We can go back to our module and select all the different files that you've got on here just by simply pressing it and let it go. Um, then you've got your HDMI in there, which um, if I had a phone plugged in, we could show you that, but it will take any HDMI um, source. Um, and going back to and as usual, you've got your aux inputs, um, play music files, photos if you want, um, and then your settings for the factory camera, which will be explained in the instructions. But the beautiful thing about this install, we now have the front camera, which is gonna be very beneficial for parking. So let me get out and show you that. And um, as usual, any questions, comments, whatever, give us a call at the number at the end of the screen. camera came out real nice as well so as usual give us a call comments number at the end of the screen thank you